Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at option contracts and it's going to be a very basic session just to teach you about calls and puts, how to calls and puts work. These topics are covered on the CPA exam BEC section as well as the CFA exam. This lesson is also covered in an essential or principles of investment course, undergraduate or graduate. As always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as your other courses please check out my website so let's talk about the call option what is a call option what's the big idea well let's assume you want to buy a stock or let's assume you want to buy a car or a house or a textbook let's start with a textbook let's assume you want to buy a textbook for next semester and that textbook is called intermediate accounting that's the course you're going to be taking don't take it un unless you have to it's a tough course okay so you want to take intermediate accounting so what you do is this the textbook today if you want to buy the textbook it's two hundred dollars but you don't need it today you can contact a student that's taken the course now and pay that student a fee we call it a premium for you pay a premium of five dollars you pay this student a premium of five dollars and this student will guarantee the book for you for one hundred and seventy dollars you say don't worry once the semester ends i will sell you the book you have two weeks i will sell you the book for one hundred and seventy dollars within those two weeks that's the deal okay so what you did is you purchase an option you paid five dollar premium and you purchase this option to buy the book now this call option notice it's called an option option means if you don't want to buy it you don't buy it if you want to buy it you can buy it what does that mean it means within those two weeks between the two semesters if you can find the book for 150 guess what you will tell your friend thank you very much you can keep the five dollars and you will buy the book at 150 if the book rises to $205 or $220, or if the book rises, there's a shortage of the book, guess what? You're going to tell your friend, look, we promise that within those two weeks, anytime I can come and buy it from you for $170, and I want to exercise my option. And that's basically what the option is. Now, let's talk about options when it comes to actual options in the stock market. A call option gives the holder the right notice the right not the obligation the right means the option right to purchase an asset for a specified price called the exercise price or the strike price remember our strike price was 170 on or before some specified expiration date so to look at an actual example we're going to look at this option this is for microsoft and this is old because from 2017 now microsoft is above 200 and who knows where it's going to go the strike price is 72 so for example July 7th call option on shares of Microsoft with exercise price of 72 to purchase Microsoft price at 72 up to including the expiration date so you can buy it at 72 up to including July 7th now there's always a price to pay you're gonna pay one dollar and fifteen cent notice here this is the premium that you have to pay so the holder of the call is not required you don't have to buy it at 72 but you have the option from today until that date, whatever today is, let's assume today is June 1st. The holder would only exercise the option to buy if Microsoft share exceeds that price. So when does it make sense to you to buy? It only makes sense to you to exercise the option if it's above the strike price and also you want to cover your fee. So simply put, you want it to be above 73.15 to me, to me to make net profit, net immediate profit. But we'll talk about the details in a moment. If the share price remains below the strike price, if it's below 72, guess what? You're gonna pay $1.15 and uh, actually it's options are traded with 100. So it's 115 times 100. So you buy options in, 
in lots of 100. So this is how much you will pay. You'll pay $115. So if the exercise price never exceeds 72, what's going to happen is you would lose the 115. Now you can buy it maybe at 68. <laughs> yeah, right. Again, Microsoft is north is starting to be above 200. Okay, so you would leave it unchecked. If not, exercise before the expiration, a call option simply expire and becomes worthless. So if it did not exceed really 72 or 73.15, if you went in at profit, you just let the option go and you would lose the 115. Therefore, if the stock price is greater uh, than the exercise price on the expiration date, the call value equals to the difference between the stock price and the exercise price. So if on the exercise by the exercise date the price is 73 73 minus 72 you have a dollar of profit from the option but remember you paid dollar 15 so you're still at a loss so you really want it to go above 73 15. so the net profit on the call is the value of the option minus the price originally paid to purchase it and we're going to look at the numbers in a moment so the purchase price of the option is called the premium so this 115 is the premium it's basically you have to pay someone to give you that option. They're not going to give it to you for free. Now, what is what is the psychology? What's the psychology behind your position and the other party position? You think when you buy a call option, when you buy a call option, you think the stock price, it's going to go up. Therefore, you want to lock it in. The seller of the call option is exactly thinking the opposite. The seller thinking Microsoft, it's gonna drop below 72. Therefore, they, they will pocket the 115 and they will never have to give you the stock. Why? Because it's gonna be below then 72, okay? So the buy of the call option thinks the stock is going to go up. The seller of the call option thinks the price of, the, of that asset will go down. So basically put, we have a pessimist and an optimist. The buyer, of the call option is optimist about the stock, thinks the stock's gonna go up. The seller thinks the stock price is gonna go down. So the seller of the call option, who are set to write the call, receives a premium income as payment against the possibility they will be required at some later date to deliver the asset and exert in return for an exercise price less than the market value. So that's what they, this is the, this is the pessimist job. So the pessimist job would write it. The reason I say pessimist because they're hoping that the stock price goes down. That's why they sold you the option because you are never going to exercise it. They're going to keep the premium. If the option is left to expire worthless, the call writer would clear a profit equal to the premium collected. We said if they sold one contract, they made $115. But if the call is exercised, guess what? They have to give the stock to the, to the optimist at 72. Now, if they have the stock, it's not a big deal. But if they don't have the stock and the stock right now at 78, they have to buy at 78 and give it to the optimist at 72 who thought the stock price will go up. Okay. If the call is exercised, the option writer profit is the premium. Obviously, they have one hundred and fifteen dollars. But if they have if they have to buy it at seventy eight, and they have to sell it at seventy two, they have a loss of six dollars per stock times one hundred shares. They have a loss of six hundred. Then they made a profit from the premium of one fifteen. They will have a net loss of the difference between the two. So the profit is the premium income minus the difference between the value of the stock that must be delivered and the exercise price is paid for those shares. Now, if you already have the stock, so what some people do, if they have Microsoft stock, so if you have 100 shares of Microsoft, if you have 100 shares and you bought them, for example, I'm sorry, 100 shares of Microsoft, and let's assume you bought them at $50, then it's not a big deal. You would sell this option, you would sell this option, you would sell this option to sell them at 72, and you will get 115 right now, $115. You'll pocket 115. Well, if the stock price goes up, that's okay. Well, if you bought them at 50, you can sell them at 72. You'd still made uh, $22 in profit plus the 115. But if the stock price goes down, guess what happened? You keep this and you keep your stock, which is still at a profit. But the thing is, if you, if you, if you sold the call, if you wrote the contract, and you did not have the stock. That's risky because the stock could jump to 100 and you have to deliver it at 72. Therefore, you have to buy it at 100, deliver it at 72. If the difference is larger than the initial premium, the writer would incur a loss. So obviously, you know, here in our situation, if you have to buy it at 78, guess what? You are at a loss. Okay. 
let's not take a look you know at some additional numbers consider the july 27 expiration call option with an exercise price of 72 on june 2nd selling for 115 until the expiration date the call holder may exercise the option to buy the shares of microsoft so this is an american option american versus european american option you can exercise this up to any time up to that date if it's a european option you can only exercise it june 2nd european is only you have one specific date assume the stock price on june 2nd is 71.75 it's below the exercise price so it will not make it will not make any sense for the buyer of the option the person that paid 115 to exercise the option why why would i buy why why, why would i exercise it buy it at 72 when i can buy it at 71.15 i already lost the 115 okay so it will not be exercise indeed if the stock remain below 72 by the expiration date the call will will be left expire worthless because no one's gonna buy it for 72 when they, when they can buy it for something else on the other hand if microsoft is selling above 72 the call holder will find it optimal to exercise now what's the most optimal price you want it to be above 73.15 but let's assume the microsoft is 73 on july 7th the option will be exercise it will give the holder the right to buy it at, to buy 72 to pay 72 for a stock that's worth 73 but remember although you thought you made a profit because you bought it at 72 um but it's selling at 73 remember you do have the dollar 15 fee so basically net profit you made 15 cent because you end up paying a fee so simply put to make real a net profit on this option the price of microsoft has to be 73.15 in other words you have to count how much you're paying for the stock which is the exercise pl exercise price plus the premium so you have to cover both to make a profit okay nevertheless exercise of the call is optimal at the expiration of the stock price exceeds the exercise price because the exercise price exceeds uh, the proceeds will offset at least part of the purchase price so the call buyer will clearly profit if microsoft is above 73.15 as i told you the net proceeds will just cover the original the original cost of the call plus the premium this is what happened so Again, this is the call option. Now let's take a look at the put option. What's the big idea of a put option? So this is basically different than the call option. Put option is when you want to protect against the downside. Let's assume you do have Microsoft stock or you don't. Let's assume you have Microsoft stock. So we're going to talk about covered put option. You have Microsoft stock. You have 100 shares of Microsoft. And here's the fear. You purchase them at 72. Well, let's assume you purchase them at uh, 55 it doesn't matter what price that's the price um your fear is and right now uh right now let's assume it's trading at 75. okay so right now it's, it's the microsoft is trading at 75 you purchase them at 55. now you have a profit of 20 dollars but guess what you fear that the stock price within the next two months might drop down below 55 or below a certain number so here's what you do you would sell a put option you would sell a put option and you would tell someone look i will give you microsoft stock between now and july 7th for 72 dollars so the strike price is 72 if you pay me dollar 32 i'm sorry uh, Let's talk about a put option. How does a put option work? The put option, basically you are protecting yourself from a downside in your asset, from the downside. So you fear your the asset that you have might go down in price. Let's assume you purchase some Microsoft shares at 68. That's your cost. That's your cost. The price right now is 75. Okay, but you're not you're not ready to sell, but you fear the stock price might drop to 65. And if it drops to 65, guess what? You are at a loss. So here's what you do. You want to protect this. What you do is you buy July 7th, strike price of 72, but it's a put option. What does that mean? It means you pay today for, you know, dollar thirty-two per contract times 100 shares. You pay today $132 to someone, and you will tell that someone, 
between now and July 7th, I can shove down your throat or sell you basically. I'm sorry about the expression, but the point is I can, I, I can sell Microsoft shares to you at any time between now and July 7th at $72, my 100 shares at $72 and you have to buy, you have to buy them. Now, what is your fear? Your fear is, or what is your motivation? Your motivation is if the stock price keeps dropping to 60, to 69, 68, you can sell it at 72. You have a peace of mind that you are, you are protected. The other person, what's the other person thinking? What's the other person that got the $132? The other, so here you are a pessimist. Here, when you buy the option, the buyer, the buyer of the put option is a pessimist, is the pessimist. The seller of the put option is optimist. The seller saying, yes, g give me 132 and I will buy Microsoft from you for $72 up until July 7th. Now, what is the seller thinking? The seller thinking, look, Microsoft, it's gonna go up to 100. I'm never gonna see this individual again. So bring it on, give me 132 and I will sell it to you for, I will buy it from you at 72. So this is the psychology on both end. So what is a put option? Put option is the right to, the right gives the right to sell an asset for a specified price or strike price on or before the, the expiration date here we're talking strike price of 72 expiration date july 7th and you have to pay a premium of dollar 32 that's the big idea on july expiration put on microsoft an exercise price of 72 entitled the owner to sell microsoft to the put writer for 72 even if the market drops below that price okay whereas the profit on a call option increases with the asset increases in price so if you have a call option you want the stock price to go up because you can buy it at a lower price. And a put option, you want the stock price to go down. Why? Because it goes down, you could still sell it at 72. A put will be will be exercised only if the price of the underlying asset is less than the strike, less than the exercise price. So if this price went down to 70, you tell them you need I can sell it to you for 72. Okay, that's below the exercise price. Now bear in mind when when someone buys a put option they don't have to own the share so they can buy the put option and what happened you don't have to own the shares so upon exercise what you would say the investors broker purchased the necessary shares of microsoft let's assume it's trading at 68 at that point you will buy it at 68 and you have the right to sell it at 72. you see you don't have to you don't have to have the stocks at, at, at the beginning i told you you have to you, you know when i explained it i said if you have 100 shares you don't have to want to have 100 shares so you can buy a put without having the shares and basically you would buy it at 68 sell it at 72 but remember you paid 132 in profit so you you will make 500 400 dollar profit you know the difference between 68 and 72 four dollar times 100 then you have a premium of 132. So let's take a look at another exercise. Consider the July 27th expiration put option with an exercise price of 72 selling on June 2nd for $1.32. So that's the premium. It entitled the owners to sell Microsoft shares at 72 at any time up until uh, July 7th. So from June till July 7th. If the holder of the put buys the shares and immediately exercise the right to sell it at 72, Let's assume they will do that. The exercise proceeds will be 25, 25 cents. Now, obviously, no one will do that. You know, an investor who pays $1.32 for the put had no intention of exercising it immediately. It means you want to sell it at 72. Okay, so you will not sell it at 71.25. But that's what it is. If, on the other hand, Microsoft is selling for 70, well, that's good. If it's selling for 70, I can sell it for 72. I have a $2 profit under those circumstances. The put will turn out to be a profitable investment if the value at the expiration will be 70. Well, you want it to be below 72, but specifically, you, I'm sorry, below 72, but really you want it to be below 72. And remember, you paid $1.32. So you want it to be even, even below that because you paid a premium. Okay, so the investor, so you made a profit of $2, then you have to cover your premium, $1.32, so you made $0.68 cent per share, and if you bought 100 shares, you multiply that by 100, but simply put, that's, if you want percentage-wise, this is a holding period of $0.68, cent. 
by paying dollar thirty two that's fifty one percent over thirty five days that's pretty good that's 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 not a bad return at all okay now obviously the other party is not thinking that's what's going to happen again when you have a put option you think the price will go down when you have a yes when you have a put option so let's talk about uh, an option when we say an option is in the money what does it mean an option in the money that's good an option in the money it means when you exercise it you would have a positive cash flow you will have a profit positive cash flow means you have a profit therefore a call option in the money when the asset price exceeds the exercise price so if you remember the exercise price x equal to 72 when when would that option be in the money when the price is 72 plus any any price above 72 is in the money well a call out of the out of the money it's the exact opposite so if the exercise price is 72 and the current price is 71 or 70 or any price below 72 we'll say that the option is out of the money why because if you exercise it it's not profitable for you we say the option is at the money guess what when the exercise price when the exercise price equal to the equal to the market price equal to the market price to the asset price to the asset price when that's the case we say the option is at the money let's take a look at these numbers real quick what will the the proceeds and the net profit to an investor who purchased the july 27 expiration microsoft call with an exercise pro price of 72 if the stock price at the expiration is 70 so if you bought a call option the call option and the call option is at 72 and remember for that you paid dollar 15 but the price is 70 you have no profit whatsoever you have a loss because you will never exercise and you lost 115 times 100 you lost 115 dollars now if the stock price is 74 if the ex if the exercise price is 74 guess what you can buy it at 72 sell it at 74 and you make a profit of two dollars then you have to pay your fee then you have to cover your fees then after covering your fees what's left is 85 cent and this is your profit this is your profit net profit well 85 and if it's multiplied by 100 shares if it's a one contract now answer part b for an investor who purchased the july expiration put with an exercise price again the same thing here the exercise price it's going to be 70 and the exercise price is 74 here what's going to happen is this when the exercise price is 70 you make a profit it's 72 minus 70 here you make a profit so you have a profit of two dollars then again you have to pay dollar 32 so what's left to you is 68 pennies 68 pennies in net profit if the exercise price is 74 well guess what you make no profit if you have a put why because why would you sell it at 72 if you could sell it at 74 therefore what you would lose is your dollar 32 times 100 so you would lose your premium 132 dollars so notice here notice here uh notice here this is a loss so for the call when the, when the stock price when the exercise when the when the price is 74 sorry this is the price exercise price is 72 uh you know, again exercise price is you know exercise price is 72 uh, exercise price is 72 when it's at 74 for the call you have a gain when it's 74 we have a put you have a loss the opposite is true the opposite is true for the put option the put option when the call when the exercise is 72 and the stock price is 70 you have a gain here when the price is 70 at a call and the exercise is 72 you have a loss you don't do anything you let the call expire in the next up in the next session we would look at values of options not of options of options at expiration once again if you like this recording please like it share it i'm going to remind you again to connect with me uh, on social media and visit my website farhatlectures.com where you have additional resources to supplement and complement this course as well as other courses Good luck, study hard, and stay.